Queen of Sheba, she came from the uttermost parts of the world, of the earth at that time, to behold the wisdom and learn of the wisdom of great King Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Behold, Moab and Bethesda the end of Gen Yehuda, conquering lines of the tribe of Judah. At Amawi, Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase first. Siyume Ekuziyari here, the elect of God. Negusha Negesh, Ze Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia. Behold, O ye careless Ethiopians, and recognize you have not just offended man, but you have offended the living God, our God Father, Kedusa Matachu, the king of kings and his Christ. So let I and I continue and move forward with this particular Ethiopian repentance, a message, a very important message, and there's no better time than present, especially in light of all that has um, happened with the double, we call it the double cross, or the double hit, even though we're learning that Many, you know, some say it could be a conspiracy of man. Others say that it could be an act of God. What has occurred just recently, this year, 2012, against church, Ethiopian church, and the Christian community, the Aviata Christianat, and against the state, against the present. Ethiopian uh, government, you know, the present Republican government. Now, we don't have the opportunity right here, right now, to go into some of the background. Some might already understand when we emphasize Republican and say, well, there's more, there's a backstory on all of that. If you check out the vid, um, the Kabbalistic uh, uh, ritual murder of the king, not just our, our production that we just, we just, we just the main part, kind of like a, uh, an introduction, almost like a trailer, you but check out the one that I think his name is Hetman Wojtek, uh, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but when you go to the YouTube, you can check out that bit, you even though you're going to see Charles the I think the Russian, Alexander, and you know, see some other pictures, Saddam Hussein right there in the red, a red so-called Rothschild, the red shield of the um, so-called Rothschild Jews, or those Jews that Revelation chapter two and nine speaks of. Don't, don't, you know, don't judge by appearances, in other words, but judge by righteousness. Judge righteous judgment. Novus, and if you don't know, get informed. You know, right? Don't get involved before you get the right 411 and the information. So check out that particular vid. That particular video right there that we just pointed out um, is very important and it might be a little bit much, but try to listen and take notes and perhaps you can reason a little bit more on it. But it gives it gives much more of the backstory to what the Holy Spirit had revealed to I and I in some of the vids that we posted up about the Illuminati conspiracy against the Imperial Majesty. But it's even more deeper, it's deeper than that, you understand, because this, this conspiracy against Haile Selassie goes all the way, so-called, back to the very beginning. I mean, we was pointing this out in the last, in the last part of the first part of this particular video, video series. We are pointing out that um, just as there was a bodyguard conspiracy for the the Kaburs, the Benya, you understand, conspiracy against the Imperial Majesty. When you look into the prophetical books, there was an anointed cherub, right? There's an anointed cherub, right? Or Kirub, the Kirubel, or the Kirubim, the cherubim, the Kirubim. 
and there was an anointed cherub, and that cherub is the one whom the Bible speaks of as that old time, or that, that old dragon, that ancient dragon, who is called Satan, and who is called Diablo, the curse, you and the imprecation of the Almighty, in the name of Yeshua, be upon them and their minions and their followers and their followers, the overs, but may those who have been taken captive by Diablos to do his will, if they make their wills obedient to the good influence of the teaching of his majesty and the testimony of our black Lord and Savior, Gay Tachina, Mithana Tachin, Jesus Christos, may they be, be called out, may they be delivered, may they be saved, because we recognize that some have done it willingly in the great transgression against His Majesty. Others, many others, have been hoodwinked and um, bamboozled and um, a whole cloak and dagger conspiracy. You know, and many of us as Rastafari, you just say fire, fire bun, like fire bun, the whole thing. Bob Marley even said, Barahana Salase. He had said, if they don't know God in his imperial palace in Addis Ababa, you also made them suffer and dead. Now, if somebody think, oh, Bob, Burhan Salasi, you, you sing about love, and, and, you know, you sing about things that, that make me feel, how could you say that? He's saying that because he's saying that by the Holy Spirit. He said that by the Holy Spirit. Now, as we get into the Holy Word, in Sinai studies, and this is the 48th uh, Sabbatical week, you know, was in, or the 48th uh, Sabbath uh, Sarment, and it's called Balmarinya Sarajot, which means judges. And in the Hebrew, it's called Shofetim. And we were linking how this actually, this name, this Hebrew name for judges, in the 48th Torah portion from chapter 16, verse 18 of Deuteronomy, to I think chapter 21 and verse 6, roughly around there, it, it, it covers the appointment of an ancient institution, an ancient institution that was pre-monarchical. It was before the monarchy was established in, in, ancient, um, in ancient Egypt. But the roots of this uh, Shofetim, as we linked only briefly right here between the Egyptian set, set Right? And the Hebrew uh, Yosef, the Ethiopic Yosef, the Afro-Shemitic Yosef, we can see the root between the Sep and the Seth, and we pointed out um, Gerald Macy's um, excellent work right here, volume, volume 2, and on page, if you have volume 2, or you can access it on the internet, you can go to page uh, 62 and 63, and he goes over the etymological and the cultural links that the Shofetim is not Phoenician, you know, the Syro Phoenician or Greek or European or Aryan, but it's truly African. But I think the important thing about the Shofetim and this Torah portion and what's going on in this present time and dispensation, what's being revealed by the Holy Spirit, you understand, to see the prophetic word. In, in, in HD, in, in high density, you know, we're looking at the word now in high density, we're beginning to see the connection and the link. So, the Ethiopian repentance, let's, let's continue on that. This is just, this is a, this is the so-called background, so to speak, in this present 20, uh, 2012. All right, in present 2012. And yes, brothers and sisters, I and I is still working on uh, the Sakari Yes, the the, the raw um, translation and interpretation to that um, little book of his Imperial Majesty. In fact, um, that was the, the last uh, publication that we know of by Kedamawi Haila Selassie. And this is the all Amharic, or this is the original a version of the original first time published in the West by the Lion of Judah Society, Ye Yehuda Moa Andesa Machiber, Lion of Judah Society, I and I, Rise the Far Right. Now it's very interesting because a lot of things that we hear about Nibiru and, 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 and you know, the different changes, we hear about Nostradamus, and we hear about the Mayans, and we hear about even 
some of the Native American tribes who all saw something. Well, I and I have an Ethiopian Yovasan record and testimony because aren't we like the children of Israel to the true and living God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, our woe and our main. Yea and our main. So let's go forward and what we're at in um, second, second Chronicles. We were reading and studying and feeding on Second Chronicles chapter chapter seven in the section from verse twelve to verse twenty two, but we got up to verse fifteen because it was important for us to um, um, annotate the overstand this particular section of scripture and also to 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 prophesy or see in the prophetic word. You understand? Because the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament in Yeshua HaMashiach is the Old Testament revealed. You know, so we're looking at Old Testament here but with the light and the illumination of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeta Jesus Christos. Samu Yitbarek, Lul Yitbarek. His name is blessed. The Most High be blessed. All right, so we were here at, at chapter 7. Now, Bamarinya, in the Metzkaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals of His Imperial Majesty, or the 1961 authorized um, revised and hard Bible, and if you want to learn any more about that, you can check our website or even look for the speech of His Majesty um, that is dated July 23rd, 1961, and some places it's given its proper title as Revised and Hard Bible, but originally it was the Mechadim, it was the foreword to the Bible. That can give you a little more um, 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 background or context to it. But that's the fulfillment, and this is the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. You understand? Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, and as our Godfather, Kedus Abba revealed as Abba Kedus, or through Abba Kedus, as, as, as he says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And that's the, the Kub, that's the Kubur, also the honor, Kubur Zedenya, the honor guards. So the honor guards are likened to, make a note of this, it's likened to the cherubim, if you understand the cherubim and in the divine courts. So we have a, as above in heaven, so on earth. You understand? Within our African Zion, our African Zion. Oh, this, this is our divine heritage, and it behooves us, not even just for our sake, but for, but for all the, the, the children of humanity, you know, and for this very earth, you know, and for even this universe to recognize how big this really is, how big that so-called little man really is. You know, and they say big things come in small packages. Well, you know, don't judge by appearances, but judge righteous judgment. So here we are in Second Chronicles, Bamarinya. Uh, this is called Metzhafe Zena Mewa'il Kalitit, right? Or the book of, and it's interesting because it's the, the Zena, which some can say like it's news on one level, can also be like fame. And notice the Prime Minister, the late, very late Prime Minister, his name was Melis Zenawi. You know, but now we're in this particular chapter, the double hit against church, the Archbishop Paulos, right, and against the Prime Minister of this Republican system. Remember what Kedemawi Haile Selassie said? He said, if the revolution, his majesty said, if the revolution is good for Ethiopia, then I am for the revolution. You know, but, and this is also one of the pictures from that particular time right there. You got this from I and I, I and I mother-in-law, and this is a, this is another angle. You probably see the other angle. Now, what is His Majesty doing here? He's sitting on the throne, right? 
and he has what's called, I, I used to call it the safari, um, like a safari from what we know over here in the West. But really, this is a battle helmet. This is a battle helmet. And this, this makes it all even so much more significant when we know the divine, the prophetic word. All right? And he's covering his face right here. You notice he's covering his face right here. Now, check out, keep this image, if you can, in mind, because this is, this is reality. This is not the work of an artist. It's not a, it's not a painting. You understand? It's not the work of man's hands. But it's a revelation of the true and living God and King of Kings. So let's recognize what is before us. And when we recognize what's before us, what we cannot see or what's invisible will be revealed to us. So here, Kadu Sabatachin is covering his beautiful face. But you can see within just the old man, right? That, that's what they call the, old, the ancient of days. We are speaking of Donnell's prophecy as well, the ancient of days, that during his time a, a kingdom would be established. Okay, let's link this together so we can understand the context. We need to understand the context of the Ethiopian repentance. Because my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Not knowing this, therefore they can't receive it because they don't know it. As His Majesty also spoke on that particular matter. But let's go to Donnell. Just let's scroll forward. Hold um, Second Chronicles chapter seven, and let us go to Daniel, right? Or Donnell. I think it's Donnell chapter. It's Daniel chapter two. It should be around Daniel chapter two, right? And in Daniel chapter, let's get this right here. Daniel chapter. Um, Actually, it's ch yeah, chapter 2, chapter 2, 44. Now, if you have a Schofield study Bible, this will kind of like even come more into context because of the notes that explains history, the past, and explains Bible by way of the Bible. And while we love this particular English version of the Bible, that it's not denominational. You understand? It's not according to you know, this denomination or that denomination or the next denomination, not according to that, but explaining the word by the word and giving some footnotes on historical elements that's necessary to comprehend in order that that prophetic word, the arai, the vision, you understand, of God in Christ will be revealed to you. That's why I said that prophecy is even more than, is more important than speaking in tongues. You know, and more important than speaking in a language, whether we speak in the good is or in the Amharic, the prophetic word is more important because it becomes a root and a groundation for Ayana. And it even when you overstand this prophecy and receive of the spirit, then the gift of languages and the gift of our pure language is yours. Speaking this to my Rastafari brothers and sisters. So so don't worry, don't fret yourself. You understand? If your learning of the Amarinya is going so called slow, it's not it's in its own right time, but remember that's a gift. It's a gift. Hear the prophetic word. So here in Daniel chapter 2, at verse 43, there's a subscription that is um, in brackets. It says E. It says the final, the final world empire. That's why they keep talking about the end of the world, the end of the Sakura. It's the end of the Gentile world domination. And it's also the end of the church age, the seven ages that were prophesied for the church since the time of Christ, since the, since the resurrection of, 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 of the saints and the holy ones, and since he took his place at the right hand of the Father in heaven. All right? So it's very important to understand the final world empire. Now, it speaks here, it says there's a colon, I think. Is that colon? Yeah, colon. It says the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Now, I want you to highlight that or, or, or really make a note of that. Because when we're studying the Wengel or the gospel, right? The Wengel or the Mishmach, the Bishmach, and then when we're studying the good news, Right, chapter 13 of Mateos, 
ديما تيوز وين ديال مدرا فاشرا شوسو اثرا صوت chapter 13 is speaking about the mysteries right there, there are mysteries now notice what Yeshua says what Jesus Christos Gitachin what he says first he gathers a, a multitude are gathered to him so he goes off of the land and he's on a boat and he begins to speak to them in Misale or Misale Woch or, or, or Mishle or Mishleim right in, 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 in parabolic you understand what some might call even myths. They are myths. You understand the myth, mutos and mishkir, the mystery is connected. You understand, but the, but the parable is symbolic. You understand, one must receive the mensas conduce the Holy Spirit, you understand, in order to be able to interpret it. You understand? Now, when you read that right there, it's talking about what? The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now what do we have in Donel? We have the final world empire, colon, the kingdom of heaven. And now the cornerstone of the true kingdom of heaven, you know saying, leading to the kingdom of God, is the throne of David of Kedamawi Haila Shalase. So recognize that this um, creeping coup in Ethiopia has a great significance, not just on earth, but especially in heaven. You understand this? This is no one small country. They said it's not about one small country. But they're liars. You understand? They're working with Antichrist and for Antichrist. It is about that small country. It is about Ethiopia. You understand? Even Ethiopians have been led to believe that, you know, Ethiopia is not that significant. You understand? It doesn't matter what happens. That's how you've been lied to. That's how you've been deceived. Like Eve was deceived. All right? But here it reads, and it says, See Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And there's a note there. So the day comes as I'm more the disciples, please check that out. And when you go there, you know, when you do your studies, write down where you go in the scripture and give a summary. You know what I'm saying? Even, this is firstly for yourself. You know what I'm saying? But then it is also, you know what I'm saying, to trust but verify you know then trust but verify all right so here in verse 44 it says and in the days of these kings shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed now some would say but where is the kingdom of Hal Salasi? It's I9 Rastafari. You know and now it has gone global. Now it has gone international. Now it has gone even multinational. But there needs to be order in the court. You know and there needs to be order in our father's house. And this is where the teaching of his majesty, the gospel of his majesty, you know and becomes that one foundation. Yes, there are many mansions in I and I Father's house. But truly, if any mansion is truly in our Father's house, it must be founded on that rock. You understand? It cannot contradict the basic foundational, foundational teaching of the King of Kings. I mean, one can deceive themselves if they want to, but brothers and sisters, John doesn't want I and I deceived. Not in a time like that. We've been there, we've done that. You understand? This is a new day. So here it says that. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. This kingdom has not been left to other people. The overhand it's been left to I and I as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. You understand? We, the so-called black people. But then one will say, well, what about the, 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 the white or the Asian Rastafari? They have a place in our Father's house. It's not us that give them it. It's John that says so in his last will and his testimony in the B-I-B-L-E. They have a role. They have a responsibility. But to whom much is given, I and I, you understand, that ethnic people, that racial Israel, more is required. So let us take our eyes off of them in that sense 
and let us look at God's word and let us watch and pray and study and show our and ourselves approved to God as workmen or workwomen, if you please, that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing or rightly explaining the word of truth. So, it says that this kingdom should not be left to other people. Shall live, children, yea. You understand? But it shall do what? Break in pieces, right? And consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. I cite this in the growth of Rastafari consciousness among so many ones and ones. They don't have to maybe wear the locks or, you know, or this or that, but there is an increasing awareness. You know, so this is what the ministry, this is what the churchical is supposed to be about. We see we're scattered all over the place. The unity is in Yeshua HaMashiach. You understand? Know if we're in Jesus Christos, we are united according to our Father's will, according to the teaching of His Majesty. So it says that this kingdom, right, won't be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it should stand forever. So what have we gone through, we Ainaz Rastafari, what have we gone through in the last 40 or so years? We've gone through a heavy bout, and we still are in it, of 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 of, of, psy-ops, of psychological operations, you know, spiritual warfare to get us distracted, you know, and off ended, you understand, know, out of the way, turning you turning back to those um to those 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 weak and beggarly elements, you understand, know, instead of turning to I and I Father in the name of Jesus Christos and turning to his word and getting instructed so we can recognize, you understand, how to overcome. He says we have already, we have already overcome this, but now it's time to manifest. First we declare, it says, first I, my men, I had faith, I believe, quote, end quote, and then I and I spoke. Yo, this, that is, it's not seeing is believing, you understand, that's antichrist doctrine, you understand, um, it's not seeing is believing. You understand? We walk by what? His faith. You understand? His hymenote. His living faith. You understand? We don't walk by human sight or, 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 or just the human awareness. Not in this spiritual walk. Let us understand and put, that, put matters in their proper order. Now verse 45 says this, For as much as thou sawest that the stone, the stone was cut out, of the mountain without hands. Now, now link this, if you will, with what Jesus Christos said to Petros, to Peter, concerning that stone. And recognize that he mentioned that to, to Peter because Peter was able to see spiritually that Yeshua is the Moshiach, and he is the vain heart Elohim Hayim. You know, he is the son of the living God. And Yeshua said that flesh and blood did not tell you this. Not just men and people, but this was the four, you understand, this was the four of the Eucharist. You understand, this was the four, that giving of the flesh and blood in that spiritual ritual. Now it's interesting when we talk about the killing, the Kabbalistic killing or murder of the king. You understand? When we look at their, the Jews who say they are Jews, their Kabbalah, and the other expressions of it within the whole New World Order paradigm. And there's a lot of others who have actually researched those things, and we have that evidence to put it together. But first things first. First is the word of John, which will guide us, and the Holy Spirit, which will guide us. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God, the great God, or saying the ancient of days, the ancient one, the great God, right, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream 
not Martin Luther for King's dream, but the real dream or the vision is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. So we see right there where it's connecting now this actual kingdom in the earth, you understand, from this small country, you understand, as, as, as Bush, one of the Bushes said, it's not about one small country, you understand, and it's sent about a new world order. You understand, well, he was being faithful to his masters, his, his master. We must be faithful to ours. See, when we become faithful to ours, then all of that yik-yak will be brought into context. And, and this is where the repentance comes into the equation right here. But the Holy Spirit led I to that portion. This is why this cover for Sakare Yesus is so dramatic, because it's showing you this. You remember over here, that's the Twin Towers, right? When, that, when did that occur? September 11th. September 11th is Ethiopia's New Year's Day. And the revolution, that was a leap year, I think, and it occurred on September 12th. And I don't know, but is this year a leap year too? Very, very interesting. All right? And that sun, is that the sun? Or is that Nibiru? Or is that the, the, the Sementenya Shi Koke, which the Ethiopic Aude Nagesh says will come and this book here speaks about these very same signs you understand but in the context of the true and living God and his Messiah you understand so what occurred against Ethiopia circa 1973 and 74 is, 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 is very very interesting you understand? It's very interesting and, and there's more to it, you understand, than really meets the eye. Even I and I have been saying to the Rastafari and to your brothers and sisters, um, before we start drinking bitters for somebody else's fever, you over know, like blaming and gets through and blaming this one and that one. Yeah, a lot of lies, so, but it is, it's much deeper than meets the eye. You understand, and some of the other brothers and sisters out there who've been doing their research and have come across some of these things and we've reasoned about it, and as we start to put it in context of the scripture, you understand, we really begin to see the half of the story. You understand, the half of the story that was not told to us before. But right now, right now, what is very important is to reverse this curse. You see, reverse this curse, this betrayal of Ethiopia. You have to reverse the curse before it truly it can be a true, um, a true uh, renaissance. You know, there has to be repentance before there is new birth, before there is a renaissance. A renaissance comes from a fancy French word and basically means to be born again. Renaissance, right? Renaissance. So this is a very excellent book right here. If you can get your hands on it, I don't know what the publication is like about it, how how widespread it is, but hopefully um, this will help you understand get it in circulation again. The betrayal of Ethiopia. Half of it's written in English, and roughly half of it is in Amharic. But this page here, I gotta bring your attention to right here. John Hoy, Bagoresu Tenekesu. Bagoresu Tenekesu. In other words, the hand that gives them the Gorsha. You know, the hand that gave them, like, the double port. It's almost like Joseph. The story of Joseph. His brothers sold him into slavery, did all sort of things against him, but he gave them even double. You know what I'm saying? But they did not recognize him. They did not recognize who he be, all right? It's just like the Ethiopians, by and large, the careless Ethiopians didn't recognize who his imperial majesty, Gormawi Kadamawi Haile Selassie be. Huh? Bite in the hand, Awo, Bagoresu. Like a dog, they bit the hand that fed them. 